Hi there, guys. Welcome to That Sounds Great. You're joined by me, Gaurav, and my amazing co-host, Cash. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the very first episode of That Sounds Great, uh, a show where we're going to be having some incredible conversations with even more incredible artists, producers, and engineers from all around the world. Uh, today's uh, episode is even more special, uh, in particular, because we have a very special guest on the show. We do. We have an amazing friend of Avid. He's absolutely awesome, Hector Delgado. Now, if you don't know about Hector, Hector's been part of the ASAP crew for a very long time, from day one, in fact. He's worked with likes of ASAP Rocky, ASAP Ferg, and many more people out there as well. Um, I can't wait to get in this conversation today and yep. talk about music, fun and stuff like that. Absolutely, me too. But before we do, guys, make sure you like, comment and subscribe on this video. We're going to be having some more incredible conversations uh, coming up throughout the year. So, yeah, before uh, before we get started, make sure you do that. And uh, without any further ado, Hector Delgado. Amazing, guys. Here we go. So, Hector, um, how you doing, buddy? How's things going? <laughs> Thanks for having me. I appreciate it, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. No, nah, it's all good, man. Well, Hector, we want to thank you so much for coming on the show today. Um, it's our first episode, of course, and we just want to kickstart, and, and you're the best guest that we could have had for episode one. I'm excited, man. So. Thank you, man. I mean, I mean, I'm excited to have this, you know, to start this journey with both of you guys, man. It's amazing. <laughs> amazing. Avid, Avid's always been a great partner to ASAP, crew, and everybody, you know what I mean? So it's been great, man. I really appreciate you guys, man, honestly. Likewise, likewise. So yeah, Hector, I'm going to start off this amazing show with a with a question that uh, I would love you to answer, actually. So who is Hector Delgado? Tell me more about yourself. Man, I, I'm a kid that grew, you know, was born in Puerto Rico. Um, I, I, you know, my, my father was a minister. I, I, I didn't grow up in like, you know, I, like, you know, Spanish churches have music in them. So I loved music and I always loved that and always had that around me. But you know, I didn't know anybody in the music business, so I didn't, you know, have a parent that played an instrument or anything, but I just had a passion for music. And, uh, you know, from there, I just, I became a, a, like a, a music nerd. You know what I mean? I was always into like into technology and stuff as well. And like, I, I, I came up in the game where it shifted from analog to digital. So it's like, I, I, I got to learn the best of both worlds. You know what I mean? It was awesome. Yeah, you were in the golden era, I think. That was uh, the perfect transition, right? The analog to digital <laughs> world is something that, like, I mean, I wish I was in there, to be honest. I've grew up in the digital world wanting to learn about analog, so. Right, yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a great breed to have that that type of um, experience, right? To, to have that transition, get the best of both worlds. And not, a lot of people don't get that nowadays, right? They have to really do their own research to really understand the analog side. Yeah, I mean, you know, that, that's the thing I've been, I've been talking to a lot of people. Like, you know, like in my era, you know, that I grew up in, it was more of the discovery era. You know what I'm saying? We were still trying to discover techniques and, and you know, ways to use, uh, you know, like, like how to uh, channel, like, you know, what, uh, like, how to group effects to make a sound you know what i'm saying like we're now like you know everybody just has a you know plugins and presets already set to go like it's like the description like everything's just a bit like they people more are in the learning era now and i grew up in the discovery era you know what i'm saying we're like everything's been discovered now and it's just like it's available on youtube to, to learn and and everybody's mm -hmm. just learning you know like everything that was discovered during those times i mean like i feel like you know it was just like I, and that's what kind of gave me a little bit of an edge, you know what I'm saying? It gave me like, like a, a, a way to, to think like a new kid and then in a way to think like, like the old, old heads, you know what I'm saying? And it, it kind of brought me in the middle somewhere, you know, I, I, I love like that. That was like the best part of growing up was just watching like dudes like actually like set up a studio and pick a mic and then, you know, not like a mic how it sounded and then you know me asking like you know what was it about that mic you didn't like or what was it about the setup and then just learning those little nuances that just really just it, it's, it's like being a chef man it's like it helps you know it's like you have a taste palette like you, you right. gotta have an ear palette you know what i'm saying and <laughs> those are the type of things that make a producer you know his ear valuable like him just being in a room just like not even have to play anything but like just his his knowledge of where things should sit where things should be like how how far you could push things you know what i'm saying like that that's the type of things that you learn and just from being in a room and watching and learning the greats you know what i'm saying and that's the that that's who hector delgado is like just growing up learning you know what i'm saying still wow. learning you know Wow, that's, that's an intro, Cash. Truly inspirational. That is an amazing <laughs> intro there. So, what did you always want to get into music? Like, what what was your dream job growing up? And I had friends, bro. Like, you know, it's like I said, I grew up in music, and like, you know, I had to sneak in. You know, like, you know, during that time, it was like the only time you could listen to like hip hop. I grew up in like, you know, by the by the time we we were eleven, we moved to uh, to to America, like the mainland, right? Wow. 
and we moved to Florida and then to uh, to New York. So I grew up around like, man, just watching like hip hop as it was born. I remember like, you know, me and my friend in, in New York, like the, the we snuck out to the mall and like, you know, he bought like the like Special Ed's first album and I bought like Cool G Rap's first album. And it was like, nice. you know, it was like, it, 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 it was crazy. Like just, you know, growing up in my era, you know what I mean? Like it was like, you know, it, we went from just even like, it being a crime to have a, a, a rap CD when I was growing up, you know what I'm saying? When the parental advisory stickers right. came on, it was like all of a sudden, like if you were underage and you got caught with that, like a, a cop could harass you for that. You know what I'm saying? It was like, it was just little things like that that I just grew up around. They were just like, it helped mold me to who I am, you know, my taste and, and just everything. <laughs> Yeah, it was. It's bizarre to think that that could have been a crime back then, where now you could just digitally get anything. No, you can. everything is accessible, right? <laughs> like, yeah, it was like you know, but like, yeah, like, and then from there, like, I just like started like you know, the only time hip hop was on the radio was like like after midnight. So I'd sneak out out of bed and I'd turn on the radio and I'd just like oh. listen to music and it was like just listening like people would uh you know mixtapes was a big like actual cassette mixtapes was a big thing and people used to bring in cassettes. You know what I'm saying from like you know, uh, DJ Magic Mike and like, you know, all like wow. Red Alert and all that. And I used to just mm -hmm. like, man, it was like the stuff they were doing was just incredible. You know what I'm saying? And it was just like, it just like, like I said, it just helped my musical palette and my journey as far as like what music was going to be in my life. It just helped shape what I, you know, what, what I liked, you know? Wow, that's amazing, man. I mean, I, I love how you touched on mixtapes because that's a, uh... Another thing that I kind of miss and, and I wish that I could get my hand on more mixtapes. So Hector, if you have any, please send them to me, bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, like that, um, bro, like, man, like DJ Juice and DJ wow. Clue and all those tapes. Well, that, that was like, you know, that, that was that was our internet. You know what I'm saying? Because that's like where you went to go see what was next. Like, man, like right. you used to like, sit around like, damn, bro, I can't wait to get that new tape. Because it's like, you get to hear what, what, what's going on in the streets. Because you, you know what I mean? Like, not like... You know, just even the early ages of uh, of touring for me personally, like when from being from New York, we had such a, 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 a unique style and a look about us. When we traveled to other places, we looked like aliens. You know what I'm saying? Because nobody looked like like you know what I'm saying. If you weren't from New York, you didn't know what what it was to or where to go get the clothes that look to look like that. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you nowadays, guys were trendsetters. Yeah, but like nowadays when you travel, everybody like with the everybody looks the same. Oh sound, yeah. Same, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like there's no like, there's no regional looks anymore. You know what I'm saying? It's just like a world where like the 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 world is your market now. You know what I'm saying? It's just different. You know what I'm saying? And and that's one of the things that I feel like like uniqueness has has been lost because you know everybody's like just mimicking everybody. You know what I'm saying? It's right. like we're in the we're we're in the the uh, the the just learning era. So it's like nobody's discovering like what you could do with this to make it your own. You know what I'm saying? They're like, Oh shit. Cool. It's like, it's like when somebody showed you a, 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 a cheat code on Nintendo or something, you know what I'm saying? All of a sudden, like, yeah. it's like, if I teach you it and then you're doing the same shit I'm doing, then you're going to teach him and he's doing the same thing I'm doing. It's like, you know what I mean? That, that's where we're at right now. Like everybody's really just learning the things that were like the, the, the nineties and the golden era had taught us. And it's like, everybody's just just mastering those type of things and I, i'm excited for you know for me personally i'm excited to see what the future holds you know what i'm saying like what what like what what's the new discovery era gonna be you know what i'm saying because like that, that that's where it's gonna be amazing you know mm, yeah absolutely yeah i think it, we're, we're getting more and more into a, a an evolving world where it's becoming so much easier for people to become an artist right you just pick up a mic pick up oh, an yeah. interface pick mm -hmm. up your phone and just write some lyrics and yeah. and more often than not people are always trying to chase a trend right that's that's why you get so many people that yeah. sound the same and it's becoming even more difficult to stand out right because there's it so is. many people other people it. that it's, it's just such a saturated market you yeah but like, that's what it is because it's like it's the learning thing though it's like everybody's just like it's it, like you we literally put out a song bro and like the next day you go on youtube and there's a how-to uh, how how I made the beat how we made yeah, the video man. all the effects that we did all yeah. the transitions all this like 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 they, like you could literally could do everything I just did and, and like and you could learn it right now you know what I'm saying oh, yeah. like <laughs> it's dissected online right yeah. I, I've seen that yeah, so many times an crazy. album comes out and yeah um, it's crazy yo it is it's crazy so I was gonna say, does it does it frustrate you seeing how easy it is for people to like learn that skill now? Like, do you wish you had access to that this sort of information back then when you guys started? It's 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 it's, it's like six and you know six and one half dozen, man. It's like you know, there's good things that come from digital stuff and bad things that come from it. But like, I feel like mm -hmm. 
you know, we're all gonna get bored to a point where we get like everything just sounds the same and it just sounds we're right. we're like clones, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we're, we're we're really just making clones right now because it's like a kid can learn how to just do what I did. So now he's he's me, you know what I'm saying? Or he's whoever he whoever tutorial he followed, he's just borrowing that kid, you know what I'm saying? But it's like I you know, I'm excited to see what people do next with it. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's where we're at. Like I feel like right now we're just in the in the learning era. So and, and that's cool. Like sometimes, like, but you know, it's it's advanced. It's like bro, when I go on Instagram and TikTok sometimes and I see these videos of like eight-year-old kids and nine-year-old kids making bangers and doing and playing instruments oh, and then jumping on the drums and then jumping on the keys and it's like yeah, it's man. nothing like and you know what i'm saying like like that's like for my son like he looks at that and he's like oh that's that's normal dad a lot of my friends do that i'm like damn like me growing up like that was like to see a kid like that that was like a prodigy you know what i'm saying but like now on the internet like yeah it's a it's, it's like the things that we thought were advanced is like it's basic to them you know what i'm saying so it's like mm -hmm. i can't wait for them to get in their discovery era when they're like just taking like like after they learn all our techniques what they do and and, and where they go with it man because it's like music is boring right now bro dead ass right i ain't gonna lie i mean that's the amazing thing though like even without going too off topic, but about, you know, like the, the new internet that's changing or like this metaverse of music in meta. I'm excited to see kind of what music's going to be like in this new world and see how people evolve what we've got currently. Because I, cause I agree, like I remember the, the way people used to dress in London and New York and stuff like that was a certain way. Um, so it's very exciting. Um, I, man, I agree with you, like the metaverse, like music in the metaverse, is it's going to be exciting, bro, because mm. like, you know, like in Asia and a lot of those uh, places, like they've already had virtual characters, right? Where like people make like like animated characters and I they mean, just produce yeah, oh yeah. these characters and they have virtual concerts. Like, I, man, like it's unlimited what you could do with a virtual character. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So it's like, I, you know, and sonically you could, man, like what does a virtual character sound like? It's not a human. So you can make it sound like anything. You know what I'm of saying? Course. So I'm excited to see what people do with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. you know, it's like, man, I, I, I just can't wait for that 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 point to come, man. Because it, it is, bro. Right now we're just we're, we're clones, bro. It's like Attack of the Clones. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's yeah, like I feel like now. we're quite close. We're quite close we to that next step. No, I think we are. Uh, Hector, I know we're we're kind of talking about the future, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go back a little bit and I want to kind of dive into to to your early days. So, you was 11 when you came to America. What was it like in Puerto Rico? Because for me, I see sun, beach, sand. Um, great music, a margarita, <laughs> a great music. So t tell me how it was growing up. Good food, you know what I'm saying? Like oh, it's good food. Oh, fire, bro. Like I mean, like being from an island, like I feel like I'm special, bro. Dead ass, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like I feel like, you know, like somebody found us on the middle of an island somewhere, and uh, so, yeah, that, that's how I feel. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because Love especially that. Puerto Rico is so small, you know what I'm saying? It's like, right. you know, but it, like it makes me be like, bro. I, I, that that's why, you, bro. Puerto Ricans, you know. Bro, most Puerto Ricans, you know, they'll have a, uh, the flag in their car and they drive around. We're, we're just very proud, bro, because we're like, you know what I'm saying? We, we want to be, we want to have a voice. You know what I'm saying? Like we're, <laughs> we get teased being a state. We've been a Commonwealth for so long. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. People don't know we're part of America. Do I need a passport? Am I, you know, like whatever, like, it's like, we, we, you know, we want to show how much effect and how much, uh, um, we've contributed to America. You know what I'm saying? Right, That's right. why like Americans are like, P Puerto Ricans are proud. And I'm proud to be, uh, bro. I, I love being a Boricua, bro. Dead ass, you know what I'm saying? That's like, you know what I'm saying? And like, for me, like having that, like that Caribbean culture and those Caribbean vibes and those sounds and like, like it, it's influenced me in music as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, and just everything mm -hmm. I do, you know what I'm saying? Like I've, man, you know, like I just adding live instruments and just, you know, me, me, uh, combining that sound was a uh, stuff I was doing before, you know, a lot of people were doing it, you know what I'm saying? There was groups back in the day that were doing band, like hip hop bands, like Stetson Sonic and stuff like that, but it was like electronic and it was like new Jack swing. And it wasn't like, like soul, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like when the Fuji's and stuff came out, like it was just like, that, 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 that's the type of thing that like being from Puerto Rico is what helped me to adapt to that sound, you know? Yeah, so speak, speaking to that music, what was, like, um, who were your f favorite artists growing up, and what what was it about the hip-hop culture that really sucked you in? Hip-hop, or...? Well, just generally, it, who were your favorite artists growing up, but also if, if you could speak to about the, the hip-hop culture and what it was about that that really um, got you involved. I mean, you know, growing up, we had, like, Hector Lavoz and, you know, Gran Combo and, like, stuff like that, like, salsa and stuff, and then, you know, as far as hip-hop, man, like, you know, like... 
bro, when I like Sugar Hill Gang and when I heard, you know, like all those records, bro, like it was just like, you know, man, like it was just a different vibe. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's what that's what like hip hop is. It's like everything about it was wrong. You know what I'm saying? The way we mixed our drums really loud, the way we did, you know, the way it was like people thought it was just talking and slow poetry, but it's like, right. you know, it's like and, and that's what's great about hip hop, man. It's like, like you have to get in it to really understand the technicality and the, everything that goes into doing what we do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's it's like, a lifestyle. It is, bro. It's like there's so much tech, technical stuff that goes along that that goes with this. You know, to be able to do and master this craft that people don't understand. And it's like, you know, w- when you make something look simple and it's not, that's, that's, that's the master. It. You know, that's, that's something that you mastered, you know what I'm saying? To make it look simple, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and Hector, just on that note, actually. So um, obviously we're fans of, of ASAP and, and all the music you've done. Um, and obviously it's got a distinctive sound, right? So how did you get started from that influence from kind of, you know, salsa music and, and all the old school music, Sugar Hill, uh, Sugar Hill Gang, um, how did you get started with kind of ASAP and how did that sound start to get cre- um, started? You know, how, how did the whole ASAP thing come about? Man, like, you know, uh, I ha- you know, I've had this studio, which is this right here in, you know, in LA. I've had this studio for like 22 years now, you know what I'm saying? And wow. uh, w- when I built it, you know, like it was a spot where like I had, you know, me, me being a producer and stuff, I had a bunch of producer friends. So like, you know, we all used to just work out of here, you know what I'm saying? And then I started meeting, uh, I started when when I first opened up the studio, it was uh, I did it with Onyx. You know, I used to DJ for Onyx. You know what I'm saying like at that time I DJ I worked for Onyx. And I DJ for and I produced stuff and and a lot of the Fredro Star's first album, solo album, the Firestar album, we did it in my apartment here in Hollywood, like dead ass. And wow. we were <laughs> you know we set up my bathroom as uh as the vocal booth and oh we just made the whole house like my. Bro, my bedroom was just a, like my whole bedroom was just gear. You know what I'm saying? It was just like <laughs> gear everywhere, right? So, uh, so I, you know, I didn't have enough money to get a spot. So yeah. I, I told Sticky and Fred, I was like, bro, I was like, I'll, I'll do the whole album. I said, you guys pay my rent for the first year. That that give me enough time to, you know, when we're not recording, I'll do sep- I'll do other sessions. I'll save up my money and then oh, I'll, cool. I'll take it over, right? And that's what happened. Bro. I've been here 22 years later, but you know, from 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 that from that uh, from that, like I started uh, from you know from working with Onyx, we met. Uh, we were working with Dipset and Yams was uh, an intern at Dipset. Wow. And you know what I mean? So that's the first time I had ever met Yams. Like he wasn't doing, I didn't know he was doing ASAP or anything. I knew he was dipset. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And uh that's the first time I met him. So cut to like five years later, uh Brian Leach, you know, he he signed Rocky mm-hmm. and uh you know they're they're coming out to LA to record and I'm doing, you know, I'm I'm working with them and uh and I see Yam, you know, and then, and then I remind Yams about all that, that the times we met back then. And, you know, that's the first time they had come back, you know, because a lot of the early stuff was done in New York. So that this was the first time they came out to LA to record at my spot of, and, and do some stuff out here. And we did a lot of the early ASAP. We did like, we were doing the first ASAP Mob album. That's what it was. We were doing nice. like the ASAP Mob album. So we were out here recording, right? And I, when, the first time Yams walks in, he's like, bro, he's like, I've been here before, bro. He's like, I've been here before. <laughs> like, he, he, he remembered, you know what I'm saying? Because it was like, he remembered it was like you know when, when I thought and then that's how uh Fredro and Sticky are all over ASAP songs, you know what I'm saying? From Nasty's World, you know, like I had Fredro uh redo the it's time to get live, live, live. Uh, like you know, that <laughs> it, it, like it was family at that point, you know what I'm saying? Like the, like the, it was all friends, you know, at that point. But that's literally how uh and then from there like i just you know like that's how the whole asap thing happened man like from the a from onyx to asap bro it went literally from yeah. that like, we just had mutual friends and it was like it you just know, felt all natural purple, just family unit, like, yeah. such a family unit. you could see from outside like how much of a family unit is you guys are so like connected and um it, it's quite beautiful to see in music as well because obviously sometimes you see in hip-hop there's a lot of kind of rivalry yeah. this and that and it's so beautiful to see a whole crew and, yeah. and a gang of people with great music as well. Yeah. Um, 
and no, it's, it's it. not it's not the sort of thing as well where you know one person really outshines another person in the group they're right. all like um a, a collectively a, a, a group together right yeah. and that's what makes them so special Very. appreciate it man you know it's like man we have a bunch of you know it's like like every successful like crew and hip-hop it has a bunch of alpha males in it you know what i'm saying there are a bunch of bosses in the crew of course, you know yeah. the, the dip said like everybody's had like you know man like they they just you know and everybody and, and the thing is i was thinking about that lately because you know since covid and everything every we've been separated like I, we went from being together every day bro like traveling the world and recording albums and in buses and hotels to like you know to not like not seeing everybody every day anymore you know what i'm saying it's just like and it's crazy but it's like you know when we were doing this uh you know I, i've been I, I'm, I'm older than everybody but like you know like I, I got to teach everybody how to how to like as a mentor how to do that how to navigate in this business and really just like yeah. how to you know how to work in the studio and do all this stuff and that like where they don't they don't need me to be around anymore you know what i'm saying that's what makes it amazing like they're like they've all stepped up and they they're all producing and they're all engineering and they're all running their own businesses and stuff and it's like bro it, it, it's exciting to see how far like everybody in asap has come bro it's, it's it's beautiful you know what i'm saying and yams like i know he's looking down and he's proud bro and jay scott oh, and everybody, yeah. bro, like you know what i'm saying we've had an amazing run that like man people only wish about you know what i'm saying and dream about we've had that experience and we we got to do it together as a, as a family bro and it's been amazing you know that's incredible wow. amazing so is is there a specific person uh in that group that has like pushed you the most in, in in your career and the sound that you guys have come up with i mean just rocky you know what i'm saying rocky and you know and as far as like you know like man like you know 12 is like the general of the crew bro like 12 is like you know keeps us all in check and you know he's like you know like but like you know but me and rocky bro like man it, if if you could like he's he's my my musical marriage you know what i'm saying like him and i we just like we <laughs> that's share a beautiful brand, description you know? yeah i love that it is bro but it's like you know he like we we just share the same we just share the same brain bro like you know what i'm saying like like we we have we have similar tastes in like what music should sound like and where our music should be and it's like we've had a great time bro that's, that's my little brother bro and he's a rock star and he's you know Bro, he he's a legend, bro. Like Rocky's an amazing 100%. producer, and, and you know, love, yeah, I, agree. I love completely Rocky. agree with that. Yeah, he'll be he'll be producing stuff, bro, for as long as he wants to do it, bro. He he's he's a super talented person, bro, and and, and humble and like just just not like he's just a good dude you know what i'm saying like yeah. he deserves everything he's gotten like and everything he's been blessed with you know you can you can kind of feel that vibe and mm. even in his interviews like oh, when you're yeah, watching yeah. it because a lot of people come out looking com you know kind of mm. smug and and you know full yeah. of arrogance but with it with rocky it's almost like he oozes charm right and, and especially in his music it makes it look easy it's yeah just... and he looks great that's the thing and he looks unique he's got no one distinctive style if he wants to dress a certain way be a certain way and that's right. how music should be there's no manual i wish there was i wish there was a manual how to dress how to look at at but if you're yourself and you're making great music you're winning right and, th and that's the thing about i think all, all the asap guys you know they all have their distinctive style but they gel together so well yeah and, I agree. Um, and that's what really brought the you know the the the, the asap mob is collective bro we have painters we have fashion designers we have you know we have wow. uh, obviously we have uh, you know uh, musical artists we have like bro it's, it's just a collective of just creative people it's culture you know yeah. it, it is it's, it's like and that's what that, and that's what we made with aug as well which is our, our creative agency you know what i'm saying which is like it, it's just you know all the little augies bro like they're all and like like i was telling you about my son with like you know these kids being so young like bro like everybody in our crew is ill at making beats djing wow. bro video directing the complete package editing like like it, it, it's normal like that's that's normal like if you don't do those things that, and at a great level nowadays bro you can't compete bro because that's that's the world we live in like you have to be really good at all those things you know what i'm saying like that's what makes you useful you know yeah of course um and and hector actually talking about so i want to move on a little bit to kind of more pro tools stuff and obviously the asap crew and how influential pro tools has been um as, as a tool right and obviously you know you've come from a digital to analog um sorry <laughs> analog to digital world should i say i mean the opposite can can differentiate there but um so how, how has it been obviously with with a tool like pro tools um you know being your canvas being somewhere where you guys can paint the picture and and be creative as you can you can make your music and 
how did you get started with Pro Tools and how has it influenced the whole ASAP crew and yourself, of course? Man, I, I'm going to give you an example, bro. Like one time, you know, like the stuff that we're doing. Oh, <laughs> oh Hector, <laughs> it's that time, bro. Oh, God. <laughs> it's about to happen. Yeah. Oh, no. So, um, sorry to interrupt you there, Hector. Um, <laughs> Oh, good. Yeah, so uh, we've reached the part of the show where we're essentially going to um, an album interlude, is what we're calling it. Mm -hmm. um, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to ask you some quick fire questions. Uh, there's going to be some silly questions, some music related questions, and uh, we're going to see how many you can question. Um, how many you can question? <laughs> how many you can answer in one minute? Um, how's that sound? All right, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm ready. Hector, good oh, luck, good. bro, for some of these. <laughs> 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 Apologies right, cool. in advance. Wicked. <laughs> Um, Amazing. Okay, so without further ado, uh, we will start the timer now. Uh, Coke or Pepsi? Man, depends <laughs> on my day, bro. Uh, Coke. Coke. Oh, nice. Analog or digital? Man, both. Uh, man, uh, uh, that's that's a tough one, bro. I Come on, Hector. One. Call one, bro. Analog. Oh, analog. Okay, summer yeah. or winter? <laughs> summer. All right. Self master or get it mastered? Get it mastered. Yeah. yeah. Indian or Italian food? Italian. I oh, damn, bro. That. I knew he was going to say that. <laughs> uh, favorite EQ? Oh, man. Uh, digital or analog? <laughs> I, I love the, the, the um, man, the digital V2 and the V3, man. The, the, the V3 is cool. Yeah. Man, I, love, I, I love that, man. Like, mm -hmm. Nice. Pizza or burgers? Pizza. Ooh, Ooh favorite compressor for vocals? CL1B. Oh, oh time's up. And that's we'll, it. We'll let that one in. We'll let that one in. CL1B. That is a great, great, great show. Um, compressor for sure. Great Thank show. Thank you for that. That was amazing. Yeah, man. that was cool. Um, <laughs> we'll uh, <laughs> we'll have to uh, we'll have to count the tally up and uh, and see how you compare to to some of the other people we're going to get involved on the show. Hundred <laughs> percent. Um, but yeah, thank you for that, Hector. We'll we'll, we'll jump back into the into the questions Amazing. now. Amazing. Um, so yeah, we were talking about obviously Pro Tools and how influential it's been as a canvas, Hector. Sorry to interrupt once again, but um, oh, we'll let you carry I, I on. Remember, from there. I remember exactly what I was, man, because you know <laughs> there there was a time you know being able to take this like you know. Me starting off in the analog world and going to digital, I remember when I first had my laptop, right? Like laptops weren't powerful enough to have like crazy amount of tracks and you couldn't really, like you, you thought you could kind of be portable, but you really couldn't be portable, you know what I'm saying? And with Pro Tools, you know what I'm saying? I, bro, I remember that there was a time we were in Berlin and, you know, I, I Ultimate wasn't out at that time or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we were still limited to the amount of tracks, right? Wow. That we can have in a session. And and uh, I think we were working on, I forgot what song we were working on, but it had like, bro, like, I mean, a ridiculous amount of tracks we, we had in the song, right? And we were running out of tracks. And then that was the day you guys came out where you uh, 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 let unlimited tracks come out. Of course. Oh, so yeah. That was a game changer for me. You know what I'm saying? Like that literally, yeah. That, yeah. for me, like when, when that happened and, compu and the laptops got powerful enough to go, like it just made, recording more intimate for us bro because it's like rocky's not the type of person that likes necessarily being in a in a, in a, a, a a corporate studio environment and you know like having pro tools and being able to like set up anywhere in a in in a, in a living room and in, in 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 a bus in whatever environment he felt comfortable recording at to help us get that take and it, and it, you know Pro Tools really helped us with that, bro. If it wasn't for that, yeah. like, option, like, and being able to, like, have every, like, like the same exact sound with me anywhere I go, bro. It was, like, it was a game changer, for real. That's the beauty of, of, of having Pro Tools and it being kind of like a canvas for you, right? Um, and obviously, so, Hector, on, on all the crew, I mean, are they quite up to scratch with, with Pro Tools? I'm guessing you've probably shown them the, the quick little shortcuts and some of the things. Yeah, that... I mean, like, you know, they all, like, they, they bro, they've all, like, progress so much to be able to do things themselves like you know like they all have their own little setups and their own their little engineers and their own crew and everybody's really like just like learn to really you, there's, there's no studio you can't go to and no place you can't go to where you don't say pro tools and people know what you're talking about you know what mm -hmm. i mean it's that that integral part of our our ecosystem and music that it's like it's just you know it's like it's 
if you want to do music, you have to learn Pro Tools. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the bottom line, you know? And and how, how would you prepare for like a big session? Do you Is there always like a set sort of routine that you follow or does each session sort of have its own unique um I mean, change? yeah, it depends, man. Like, you know, like you kind of just gauge like, man, being an engineer and a producer and being somebody that you know works hands-on with artists, bro, you like, you know, you, you, you're... You're a bit of a, a of a big brother, a psychotherapist. You know, you listen to problems. You know, you learn you you learn to be a listener. You know what I'm saying? And a good engineer, like that's really what you are, bro. You you're listening. You're listening to to how instruments sound, how they're being recorded. You know what I'm saying? Like right. you have to learn to be a good listener. You know what I'm saying? And that's what a a good producer engineer does. You know what I'm saying? And that's for me. Like when I'm, you know, I, I'm listening. I'm trying to cater to everything that the artist wants. You know, if if he needs a uh, 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 a teammate, I'll bro. You need anything, whatever you need. Like, I'm 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 there to help them be comfortable. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? That's yeah. really what, like, you know, I think those are just as important as setting up your template in, in Pro Tools. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which is getting ready for the session as well, because it's like you have to make the space comfortable and everybody feel like it's a work, like a, a good creative energy in the room. You know what I'm saying? You want to, you know what I'm saying? That that's as the person running the show and that's what you are when you're in, in the engineer and in the, in the studio and the producer like you know you have to create that environment and that vibe you know what i'm saying the, and the greatest know how to do it do it the best bro you walk into like timberland sessions everybody's having a good time smiling and creating and that yeah. just and that makes everybody it, it's like a coach you know what i'm saying it's like yeah. the coach gives you you know like you're half time and you're losing and and the coach inspires everybody to do better that that's really what the producer does bro he he's trying to get that thing that 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 you didn't even know that you had inside of you to come out and like you know to present it to the world you know what i'm saying that's that that's a gift yeah. you know that, that's a gift to be able to do that i think i think it's a beautiful thing to to be able to have that um have that vision to to really make the studio feel like uh, a warm and and comfortable environment right you don't want to make them feel like they're coming to work when they're coming to record vocals for example yeah and, and you know and things with you know especially with hip-hop you know, when, when you're doing pop songs, you know what I'm saying? Uh, like, that's more of a mechanical world, you know what I'm saying, to yeah. me. Like, you know, like, pop is like, you know, like, the person who's singing it, not, like, 99% of the time didn't write the lyrics, you know what I'm saying? So it's not as, in, it's not as, like, for it, it's a job at that point, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, yeah. so we need you to sing this, 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 this. Like, when you're working with rappers and and people in, in, in our world, I mean, like, like, they're writing things that's like, bro, like, they're either seeing or they, 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 right witnessed or like it's more intimate you know what i'm saying so it's, it's a different situation it's like therapy for a lot of artists you know what i'm saying like oh, to get is. these feelings out and like really and and you're there to like as a producer and engineer like your job is to like like take take their idea and, and and make it amplified so much that the whole world it's like the biggest speaker in the world you're making for for this artist to get their music to be heard everywhere you know what i'm saying right, that's right. what you're there to do like you know help them get their vision out you know what i'm saying yeah. like that's that's your job you know and as, as, as someone that's obviously you know so close to, to asap rocky and and you know the, the wonderful relationship you two have how do you th- how important would you say it is to have that bond with your with your producer or engineer in order to achieve success it's super important, bro. Like, I, you know, I've, I've told this to, you know, to Rocky numerous times and, you know, but like, bro, everybody, every successful crew has a me, has a Rocky, has a 12E, has a Nas, has an Addy, you know what I'm saying, has a Fur. Yeah has a you know has a, uh, a, a manager like ours has a lawyer like ours like like there's just certain things that like that that like things that you need to be successful you know what i'm saying and, right. and everybody that's doing those positions and that you've appointed those positions has to be the best at their job you know what i'm saying like 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 and and and, and what's crazy is it's like the chicago bulls bro like like individually like they might have not been the best you know uh you know like if they didn't have Jordan or they, they, they weren't all together, they might not have been the, the team that they were, but together, course, yeah. like yeah, they yeah. were, just, they, 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 they just, they complimented each other. And that's what you yeah. got to do. You got to get people around yeah. you that compliment you and that, that make you better. You know what I'm saying? And then, like, and, and that's what it is. Like, it's just like getting around the right ensemble, you know what I'm saying? And that's really yeah. a producer's job as well. You know what I'm saying? Like putting the right people in the room to make, uh, the, the 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 project and 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 the sound and the vision of that artist come alive you know what i'm yeah, saying right. that's your job you know what i'm it's, saying it's, it's team energy and team team kind of spirit that kind of puts a product let's say or a project together right um it's beautiful and on on that note actually hector just um the, the last one i've got it actually gels really really well 
Um, so tell me what's next for ASAP and uh, and Hector Delgado. You know, what's what's the what's what does the future hold for you? And what are you currently working on as well? That's a good point. I yeah, mean, yeah. like you know, we're working on albums and stuff. Like we're working on, you know, like everybody's, like, man, like I, I feel like you know, as far as like the things that we're doing creatively, I, you know, I, you know, we're like as far as Aug, like in in and our company, as far as that, like we've been doing a lot of videos for people. You know what I'm saying? We just did a, a video for Snot and Rocky that just came out. It's called Doja Cat, which is fire. Mm, nice. Um, you know, we just did the uh, the Nego and uh, the Nego uh, Aria song, wow. and we, we we you know we that's a production that we did as well in the video and everything. We put that whole thing together. That like for us, that's what we're doing. Just trying to make, just just trying to take like our vision of what we vi- envision like things moving forward like you, you're gonna you're gonna start seeing that in the things that we're producing that are, that are coming out lately you know what i'm saying like we're, we're and that's really what t- testing was you know what i'm saying like testing was like just like man it, you know it, it's like it's one of those albums that the more you listen to it bro it's gonna grow on you because it's like yeah it's you know the, like the, the the techniques and the ideas that we were presenting at that time you know are things that are coming around now you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and that's really you know it's like and that's really what we want to do, which is really just, you know, for what we're doing is just push forward. You know what I'm saying? Like not really try to be sound like anybody and be just right. being our own thing. And that's really what ASAP has done. Like, you know, like as far as our crew, like we have our own thing, bro. Like, you know, like, and I'd rather fail doing my own thing than sound like somebody else, bro, all day. I don't care. Preach. <laughs> Love that. Amazing. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Th- thank you so much for uh, for coming on to the show, uh, Hector. It's been a, it's been a pleasure having you and uh, meeting you as well. Likewise, man. Thank you for having me. I mean, I appreciate you know you guys having me on this journey with you guys, man. Thank oh, you. Man. Awesome. Can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Um, I can't wait. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go home and on the way home, I'm gonna listen to the whole album. Yeah, Long live think... ASAP as well. It's just yeah, man. Albums, like so. why not? <laughs> man, like yeah. I mean, I- I'm excited. You know, like. When, when, when we get to London to get together with you guys in person and just really, yeah. you know, we'll have a drink at that point, you know? Oh, I we like that. To. We yeah. To. yeah. <laughs> we got to do that. Yeah, it's a must. Um, Appreciate well, you guys. guys. And thank, thank you to you. Avid, man. Thank you to Avid. And, you know, man, like you guys are, are great partners for us, man. Like, thank you guys for real. Well, of course. Anytime. Avid team are going to love that. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Um, well, listen, everyone, for uh, thanks for watching. Um, and uh, like I said before, please make sure you like, comment and subscribe because we've got some incredible people lined up for this show. Uh, and once again, Hector, thank you very much for attending. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much, guys. And see you on the next episode. Take care. See ya. Bye-bye.